Hey everyone, this is David Chen from SlashFilm.com and I want to talk to you about The Light Between Oceans. Dearest Isabel, I can't stop thinking about the time I spent with you. Dearest Tom, when I first saw you, I felt like I knew you and I couldn't stop seeing my life with you. To be loved by you. <laughs> Allowed me to feel again. The Light Between Oceans is the fourth film by writer-director Derek C. in France, uh, who's also directed films like The Place Beyond the Pines and Blue Valentine, which is one of my favorite films of all time. Derek C. in France is able to wring all this emotion out of simple moments between uh, the characters in his films. Uh, and The Light Between Oceans is no different except it's far grander than anything else he's ever made uh, on every level in terms of the emotion, in terms of the plot, in terms of the setting. Uh, everything is bigger this time around. And uh, I think overall, The Light Between Oceans is a really great film and a powerful one. The movie stars Michael Fassbender and Alicia Vikander playing Tom and Isabel, a couple who meet while Tom is manning a lighthouse that's stationed on a deserted island called Janus. The two fall in love, have a courtship, uh, but find themselves unable to have children successfully. So when a baby washes up alive on shore, they need to make a decision that's gonna impact the rest of their lives. I found this movie to be really powerful and affecting, and there's a few things I just wanna highlight about it. Firstly, I think the performances are top-notch here. Fassbender has done a lot of work as a strong, silent, stoic type, and this is probably uh, his best version of that. I mean, you totally believe that he is someone who would be an ex-soldier, who would man this lighthouse that, like, by himself on this deserted place for months on end. And Alicia Vikander is such an amazing magnetic presence that you can also understand how someone like that could uh, pierce through his shield and, uh, and get through to him. And I think their uh, love affair is plausible and uh, powerful and moving. Take me out to James with you. What? I want to see it. I want to see where you hide yourself away. I'm afraid that would be against Commonwealth rules. <sighs> the only woman allowed on Janus is the Keeper's wife. Then marry me. <laughs> Why are you laughing at <sighs> You'd have to have rocks in your head to want to marry me. Better get you back home. Or they'll have the troopers after me. Come on. I also appreciate what the movie is trying to say about life and love and the decisions we make. That sometimes we do things for the people we love that are unimaginable otherwise. And when faced with those consequences, what will we decide? The movie puts you in that situation and asks you these questions. I think this movie deals with uh, miscarriage in a really uh, thoughtful way. We often don't see miscarriages on screen, uh, and I can't recall the last time I saw a miscarriage depicted when it is in fact like a very common occurrence that a lot of people we know suffer through. And I think the way this movie deals with it and the way Alicia Vikander's character of Isabel deals with it is so powerful and so moving uh, that for that alone, I feel like it makes a contribution to our conversation about that particular topic. Now, I think that the latter part of the film kind of veers too heavily into plot twisty melodrama that I felt like didn't really fit in. And also, the movie relies so much on sweeping vistas and amazing cinematography and, and shots of uh, people making out and falling in love and flirting with each other uh, that I wish there had been a little bit more reliance on dialogue for character development versus kind of imagery for character development. Uh, and as a result, I feel like the movie doesn't pack quite the emotional wallop that I think uh, the writer-director wants it to pack. Uh, so the ending didn't leave me in tears like Derek C. and Francis' other films have. Instead, uh, I felt impressed and admiring of what I saw, 
but not terribly moved. That being said, I think this is a really great film that has some amazing performances that make it worth recommending just uh, on their own. And so I say, if you like Derek C. and Francis' other films, you should check out uh, The Light Between Oceans. And even if you didn't, I think it's still worth taking a look uh, because there are very few films that are made like this uh, in general. And to see one of such scope and such ambition is rare indeed and worth rewarding. So thanks for listening to my review of The Light Between Oceans. My name is David Chen. And if you like this review and want more, subscribe to this channel or find me on SlashFilm.com and at these other places.